Good morning, Bermuda. Good day to everyone who have come out uh, today to witness a celebration, a celebration for St. George's, uh, where we will be rolling out in constituency number one, St. George's North, our candidate for that area is none other than Mayor Kenneth Bascom. We are delighted at the opportunity that Bermuda has and the opportunity that St. George's has in having someone like our mayor of the municipality in St. George's standing for St. George's North. This is a welcoming thing for St. George's. He is no stranger to those who are, uh, are, are living in St. George's. He is a friend of mine, a uh, friend of my father's coming along as I was a kid. And everyone knows that he has an endless amount of passion and energy for wanting to revitalize, to bring life back to St. George's. And I am delighted that we have this opportunity now to roll out our mayor of St. George's as the candidate for St. George's North. Thank you very much. Kenneth? Good day, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let me say thank you for coming here this morning. I ask for this particular day to honor the memory of my nephew, Shay Simmons, who recently lost his life. And as we take this journey into the next election, we, the One Bermuda Alliance, will make certain promises to the community of St. George. Number one will be a fully functioning police station. Number two will be a fully functioning fire station. You will be aware that I, as the mayor, had the opportunity to speak with Mr. Bazarian last week, and Mr. Bazarian has made a commitment to follow through with the project of bringing a hotel to St. George. I believe we in the Bermuda One Alliance have the individuals to sit and bring this to fruition. There are many issues in the town of St. George that I believe have been neglected over the years. Having had the opportunity to serve on the St. George's Corporation now going on for 18 years and now as the mayor, I have an integral understanding of what is required in the town of St. George. I've operated businesses in the town of St. George. I've worked with the young people through the clubs and through the prisons. Mm -hmm. And most of you will be well aware that I believe that we need to take a new focus when it comes to dealing with our young people going astray. Mm -hmm. And I believe with the team that the One Bermuda Alliance has put together, we have the expertise and the passion to bring about what I believe will be a new focus particular for our young people. Now you will be aware that the town of St. George holds world heritage status. However, I don't believe that that has been used as a marketing tool to help to create a buzz for tourism. We keep jumping, jumping, and jumping, and I believe that Bermuda is still a special place. And we just need to focus on our core markets, and I believe that we could get tourism back on track. Understanding that we need beds, there are some projects on the horizon, and I don't believe that the government of the day has taken the initiative to sit down and to assist the developers who are looking to bring beds to Bermuda. And I believe that with the team that the One Bermuda Alliance has assembled, have the fortitude, the expertise, and the energy to put Bermuda where we know it should be number one. You'll also be aware that we're having problems in St. George with the sewer system. We, the One Bermuda Alliance, will make a commitment that something will be done so that we will no longer be pumping raw sewage into the ocean. And most of you who know me, I will say to you, they call me a humanitician. I work with and for people. 
Mr. Johnson, you didn't catch that comment. I'm surprised at that. <laughs> I don't work as a politician. I work as a humanitician. I work on people's hearts. And you will be aware that's why I have the privilege of being in the position that I'm in now, against all odds. And I believe with the support of the community of St. George and with the support of the team that we have put mm -hmm. together at the One Bermuda Alliance, mm -hmm. that we can win the government of this country and take it where we know it can go. And having had the opportunity to represent the jewel in the crown, it would be an honor for the St. George's people to send me to Parliament to be their representative. Yep. I'm going to stop taking pictures. You're going to make me excited. <coughs> but at this time, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say I want to thank you once again. And I want to say thank you to the One Bermuda Alliance for affording me the opportunity to carry the banner in constituency number one going into the next general election. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any well, questions? Well, 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 have I determined? Yeah. But that's, so a leg, I, that's a legal terminology. We'll let the legal people deal with that. Certainly, we've had our legal team take a look at um, the Constitution, and as of, as of right now, we've seen no uh, conflict at all in Section uh, number 30 of the Constitution. Um, so um, we don't see any challenges at all. What does this mean now for the plans that you have in place in St. George's? Well, my plans as the mayor don't change. However, I believe should the OBA win the next general election, and I believe my colleagues know that I am a little feisty individual, uh, and I've learned how to get the best out of people because you allow everyone to keep their opinions. And you work around people's opinions, letting them feel that they're a part of the process, and you're able to go forward. So as the mayor, I believe that should I be fortunate to receive the support of the community of St. George to be elected, I believe that I will be in a stronger position yeah. to help the community of St. George. The, the community is very skeptical that there's actually a hotel going to be built on the site of a former Club Med Hotel. Why is the conversation that you had with Mr. Bazarian going to turn things around? Well, what I would say to you, people are entitled to their opinions. I was in the room with Mr. Bazarian. I would like you to make you aware that I said to Mr. Bazarian that I'm not the guy to play games with. And uh, he made a commitment to me, and I have to believe the commitment that he's made. You will be aware that there are economic challenges throughout the world. He has scaled the project down, and I don't believe that if Park Hyatt didn't have some sort of faith in what Mr. Bazarian was proposing to do, they would not come on shore with him each time that he has come to have discussions. And when it does come, I would like for you to come to me and say, Mr. Bascom, once again, you're proven right. I, I, I don't like for people to be proven wrong. I, that's not in my vocabulary. I, I, I would like for you to come and say, Mr. Bascom, you were proven right, and I will have a bouquet of flowers for you. <laughs> Well, your confidence in that project is actually an endorsement of the government. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say that. You have to be aware that I've met with Mr. Bazarian on numerous occasions when he's come to the island and he hasn't spoken with the government. I met Mr. Bazarian six years ago, very coincidental, when I was the deputy mayor and I gave him a few words of advice and each time that he's come on shore He's made a special effort to come and talk with me. Mm -hmm. so. <coughs> Why? What, what do you think? Um, I don't think I believe. A, what, what gives you um, a sense that you'd be successful this time around? When you haven't been since you started running. Like, since well, the last you, two times you well, you'd be aware that I can't run. I think I've told you that over and over. I will be a candidate. And uh, I always go into any race expecting to win. In 1991, when I stood for the city council, I lost by two votes. 
1994, I was elected by a majority of 45 votes. And in 2000, 54 votes. And my vote count went up each year that I stood for the city council. And I now hold the distinction of being the mayor of the town of St. George, which is an honor. Mm -hmm. And I would ask you to ask six people in the community of St. George if they ever saw me carrying the medallion as the mayor of the World Heritage Site. I believe I was able to achieve. With the desire, I was able to acquire. And you will be aware that the young lady ran for six elections before she was finally sent to Parliament. Tell me, Mr. Braska, what did you do to finally, I use that word, intention, get a cruise ship in the town of St. George? Well, we in the corporation are talking with other people at this particular time. The main issue, you'll be aware, is the size of the ship and the configuration of the town car channel. We need to sit down with the constituents without the media present, because if the media is present, it will create hysteria. People say widening, I say modification. People say gambling, I say gaming. It's only semantic, but in Bermuda, semantics carry a lot of weight. We are also talking with Mr. Henry Haven, who has a alternative plan. He's met with the council. It's now up to the people which way to go. And let me make this point here, that the community of St. George, in my own humble opinion, have put too much emphasis on the cruise ship understanding that it does give an economic boom, boom to the town, I believe that if we were to market that little village for the historical aspects and what it means to New England, we would have to turn people away. You'll be aware that I had a little handout in my re-election campaign talking about nostalgia tourism. I had the opportunity a few weeks ago to speak with a lady who actually works for the Homeland Security and she's sending me a list of all of the people that are living that were stationed there on the basis over the last 35 years. And when I spoke with her in regards to nostalgia tourism, she said to me, Kenneth, if you could put packages together to encourage people who were living here at one time you would have to turn down your airport. There are so many little simple things that we can do. I just received an email from some folks from Thailand that I met two weeks ago in St. George while doing a little bit of work to help my workers. And they just sent me an email and the photographs that they took with me. But I believe, Mr. Webb, with the right discussions, Bermuda, can be put where I know it should be, the jewel in the crown, and we have the crown in the town of St. George. Okay. Do, you feel, do you feel that the young lady to whom you referred to now, as a result of your being rolled out, should she be afraid, very afraid? Well, let me answer that question very simply. I cannot feel or think for other people. That's a question that you need to pose to the young lady. <laughs> Mr. Bass, from having been out and met with constituents, and what sort of feedback are you getting? Well, I don't form any countenance until I'm rolled out, but you'll be aware you're from the East End. You see me every day. I canvass every day in the community of Bermuda. Every day. So now that I've been officially rolled out, I will now be on the doorstep knocking to see what people's concerns are. I will not tell people what I'm going to do. I will ask them what would they like to see happen and then mm -hmm. jive that with what we believe can be done Absolutely. to enhance our community. See, let me make this point here when I talk about a police station. The police say to me the only concerns they have are basically for directions. I said, well, that should tell you something. The community is safe and people feel comfortable when they know that there's a fully functioning police station. Where's the two banks in St. George? Right in the square. 
Okay, it's the main cumbrous area in the east end. And then a candidate was rolled out and he said that government has considered St. David's and they put a police station in St. David's. St. David doesn't have the commerce that St. George's has. So I believe that we should have a fully functioning police station. We have historical buildings that are 400 years old. They took the fire brigade anyway. They continually say it's only seven minutes away. Well, I would just like to take something and be attempting to injure you for seven minutes before the police arrive. But they're becoming a little bit more high profile now. And uh, I believe that should we win the next election, the community of St. George will be <coughs> rejuvenated. There's been talk on the blogs of uh, you mentioning a, some form of a toll bridge of sorts on the causeway. Can you expand on that a bit? Well, see, this is the wonderful thing about Bermuda. Get a box, make sure there are no sides on it. There was only an eye there to see what the feedback would be. We can resist as much as we want. The causeway, coming and going, the Bailey Bridge, I call them temporary and permanent. They're going to have to be replaced. The terminal is going to have to be replaced. So that was just one progressive thought that I had. However, I believe that Bermudians like to be nickel and dime, so we'll charge you three cents for your bread, three cents for your gasoline, three cents nickel and dime, you, rather than just putting something in place and going forward. Head tax can be looked upon. And this is where I really get offended because whenever I hear the major players in Bermuda talking about dockyard, the waterfront, the new project at Morgan's Point. You have one brain, although it's two sides. You have one spine. You have one heart. St. George's is the heart and the spine of Bermuda. All of the gravel comes into St. George. All of the fuel comes into mm -hmm. St. George. The main channel is in St. George. The pilots are in St. George. The airport is on St. David's Island, but it's in the parish of St. George. Mm -hmm. And the person with all the energy happens to be the mayor of the town of St. George. <laughs> as, as hard as you work for the town, where on the priority list does the replacement of the causeway fall? We one, two, three, four, five. Well, I would say it should be number one for the government. And why I say that, we have an estimate of five more ships coming for gravel for the airport. I mean, for the hospital. And after that, those bridges are going to look like use, I'm telling you. So we need to determine now what we're intending on doing, putting a long-term plan in place so that we're not scrambling around at the very last minute to do what needs to be done. And I live in St. George, and I say it would be a little burden on me. However, it's an irritant to me when I can't come, or if I'm here and I can't go, and then people start to call the corporation office. Can I speak to Mr. Bascom? Mr. Bascom, have you heard whether the causeway is closing? And I'll make the relevant call and let the young lady know that up until a certain time they are going to keep <coughs> assessing and then you put one guy that lives this side and then the other guy goes and stays up to St. George Club until the EMOs determine that the puff of wind is gone. Thank you very much. Um, what are your thoughts about, <coughs> can I ask one more question? Yeah. Oh, look, actually two questions. Your thoughts about the tourism, the new tourism campaign? Right now, it's doing nothing right now. Myself, my, my deputy mayor and my secretary had an opportunity to speak with these folks, the government board here, and the young lady asked me why am I not on the tourism board? And I went like that, you may understand what it means if you don't. But every time they've had a public meeting, they beeline for me. 
and I told people because they want me on board. And I was told by one of the persons that there that they need me on board because I made a statement on the radio that I'm going to become a loose cannon. And the gentleman came looking for me, asking me not to become a loose cannon because a loose cannon shoots everyone and they needed me on board. So what are your thoughts about the new social campaign? This is what it is, a campaign. Say it slow. Can you, can you elaborate a bit? You mentioned at the beginning that you chose this day because to honor the memory of your nephew. Yes, sir. Can you expand on that a little bit? Well, you'll be aware that my nephew took some medication after becoming sick, and he was in a coma locally for two weeks, and in a coma and lay for four weeks until he succumbed to his illness. 